Hi, this is Jerry Kablack. Uh, we're here at Baker Industries. Um, we're specializing in machining and tooling, and we're about to take you on a tour. Follow me. So here we are in our Plant One machining area. Um, this first area that we're looking at is the zone where we actually do a lot of our roughing machining. You'll see our uh, five-axis echo mill. Uh, it's got 10 meters of uh, capabilities. And these are all our larger, you know, high horsepower, three axis machining centers. Again, we mainly save them for roughing. Yeah, the raw stock comes in in this area. We, uh, you know, whether it comes in in raw format or it comes from our fab department, uh, some customers send us their castings as well. So we'll get raw castings. And then again, we start the machining process on this side area. And then once we get them roughed or semied, then they go next door to our five axis for finishing. Okay, so here we're on our, uh, where our four axis boring mills are. These are CNC boring mills. Which again, we do a lot of our weldment machining on these, um, more weldment type of uh, parts. These also have um, a lot of capabilities with a turntable your standard boring mill setup. The nice thing is that it's CNC controlled. So again, we use this for roughing and finishing on molds and different tools or weldments. Um, going this way, we this is our big machine, um, our biggest five axis mill, the power mill. It's made by Mechoff and we brought it online here at Baker back in 2017. So we've had wing tools for aerospace We've had full vehicle body sides on here, so what's nice is it'll pretty much handle anything. Um, but also what's nice about this type of machine is that we can use it for multiple tool setups. So even though you'll see one tool that's covered up right now, that's in the front half of the machine, and we could be having set, you know, having set up three or four different other tools or parts being machined in stages, and therefore we're able to be able to use its whole capacity. It could have a totally different setup. But what's nice is the table's so big, so while something's getting inspected or being programmed, the machine can actually stay working and increases our efficiency quite a bit. One thing nice about the power mill also is that it has four interchangeable heads. So yeah, the machine is fully five axis, but there's different style of heads for different types of uh, machining that's required. So now we'll go over to our, again, like I was saying, our finishing. This machine was so big, this is the only place we had room for it. Over next door here in this section of the building is where we have our smaller five axis mills and what used to be our larger machine. So here you can kind of see down our row, these are all our a lot of our finisher five mill, five axis mills. We're also very diversified as far as what we machine, because again, Baker got started in the um, service bureau area. So we were always machining other people's tools or parts for them. But again, we were just a machine shop when we started. From hard steel that we were looking at next door, that was a lot of stainless and Envar, we were also still cut run models as well. Again, you can kind of see in here um, on one of our smaller five axis mills, I believe that's an automotive part being machined out of aluminum. And that's the fixturing that a lot of people use, but we've actually developed a lot of it. And we actually produce a lot of our own fixturing for our machining setup. And then over this area, the machines get a little smaller, but this is where we do a lot of our detail work. So again, small steel, stainless, or aluminum parts get machined on these small five axis mills. That's a B pillar for a full vehicle buck. So you can kind of see what, I'm, what he's doing. He's actually moving parts from one machine to another. Again, for different processes. So it might have started off being roughed out on our other side, on a three axis rougher mill brought over here to get some three axis finishing done. And then it's gonna be moved over for some five axis, you know, undercut flanges or holes. 
All right, now I think we'll head over to plant two. That pretty much takes care of this building. We'll walk back up here. Okay, so here we are in our fab department. This is plant two. This is all our fabrication, welding, uh, torch cutting. We have our five axis water jet here, and we do all our bump forming here as well with our 750 ton brake press. I'll show you that. And here's our flow. It's a five axis water jet with a 20 and 10 foot table. And with a five axis, tip, we can tip the head and do bevels which again, a lot of people know in fabrication and welding, a lot of bevel joints are required. So we're doing all that on the water jet. So we're cutting the stock to size and prepping it for fabrication right out of the gate. So over here is one of our welding areas where they're gonna do some fitting and begin the welding process. This is a lower egg crate structure and that's gonna be for a face tool for the aerospace industry. Very similar, we do the same process for automotive as well. So basically anything that's gonna use a, a, a composite mold for like carbon fiber layup, it's gonna use in an autoclave. This is how the process starts. So those notches and fitting, that's all what we would use the water jet for. So over here is where we do a lot of our bump forming and fitting. We have uh, multiple laser trackers you can see in the background over here. And those are connected to our Katia workstations. So even at fabrication, our guys are actually looking at CAD models and laser fitting it to the model itself. And then we're actually putting in our laser spotting pucks for location. So as they're done with fabrication, it goes right over to the machine shop and they know exactly where this weldment is, as far as having where the extra stock is and where all the extra material will be for machining. And this is the brake press I was talking about, so it's 750 ton capability. So again, we can use that for straightening and forming uh, face sheet tools, as well as any type of weldment that we're working on to get a little bit better um, location. Okay, we're here at our Plant 4 Aerospace Building. Uh, this is where we finalize aerospace tooling, certify it, and complete it, and get it ready for shipping. So, here we are in the shop of Plant 4. We start off with our fat department or the machining department. But either one, things get machined or fabricated first, and then after that, it comes here for finishing. This is where we'll put on our coatings, one of our new state-of-the-art paint booths. Coating has a backdraft. Once we coat it, then the builders will do their finishing touches on it, install inserts, do the final assembly, and then it's certified right here on the shop floor. The bigger tools are actually certified here um, on our laser tracker system. And then the smaller stuff will be on the end. We'll walk by our CMM tables. And here's our CMM area. So again, this is an area where we're certifying our details before they get assembled to the full assembly. One of the neat new tools that we did get is this uh, ferro arm laser, uh, white light scanner, basically. So this is um, one of our new additions to our CMM room and our quality control. We use it for collecting data. We can reverse engineer as well as inspect parts really quickly and it doesn't touch. So we use it, we do a lot with like um, small materials or thin materials that are uh, touch probe isn't perfect. Um, it causes parts or materials to flex. So that's where the white light scanner really works out nicely. So here's the uh, shop floor of Plant 3 Automotive. Everything that we're doing here is mainly towards prototype parts or uh, production tooling, uh, primarily fixtures and gauges. We do do some mold work, uh, prototype molds of production, but in general, we stick with the quality side, which is more uh, along with the gauges and fixtures. So we um, specialize in not only um, welding fixtures, but also full assembly fixtures and inspection equipment and fixtures and gauges. So just like we do in aerospace, 
things start out in their fab department or machine shop and come over here for finalizing. So that's what a lot of the builders are doing now. They're benching, they're installing in, uh, inserts and, and assembling the full tool prior to inspection. Each builder has his own kind of work cell. So he has a granite, a print table, and his own machine, like a bridge port. Um, so vertical end mill, he's using that to make all his detail work. But again, the machine shop's doing all their big stuff, their main bodies, and then the builders here will make their own pins, net pads, coupons, some of the smaller details for final assembly. They like to do it that way so they can get that perfect fit every time. So again, just like we saw some parts in our machine shop, they come over from machining, they come right over to the build area, and then they're here for final um, installation and assembly. And then they'll go into this room, which is our CMM room. This room's closed off in this building. Let's take a look. So it's our CMM room where we have a little bit larger CMMs. They, can, they are capable of inspecting and holding a full vehicle, buck or body side. Well, we also have laser trackers if we don't if we have tools on the floor that they're assembling and they don't want to move around then we'll also use our laser trackers in this building for the most part the details and final inspection of most of our fixtures are done right here in this room and that basically concludes our tour you just watched a video in modern machine shops view from my shop video series if you might like to see your shop featured in a video like that, email us, shopvideo at mmsonline.com. Tell us what makes your shop special.